All right then, gang, so this is where we're up to at the minute. We're handling the post request from the web form and we're giving control to the store action over here. And in there, all we're doing is grabbing the name, type and base from the request. That's those fields in the form. And we're just logging those to the terminal. Now, instead of all this jazz, what I'd like to do here is actually save that data to the pizzas table. So to do that, what do we need to do? Well, we need to kind of make a new pizza record here in the code, first of all, and then we need to take that record and save it to the table. So how do we make this record in the code? Well, if you remember, we can use the pizza model inside this file. So what we could do is create an instance of the pizza model, because remember, the pizza model represents our pizza table. So if we create an instance of the pizza model, it's like creating a programmatic version of a record in that table. So let's do that. I'm going to create a variable, call it pizza, and I'm going to set it equal to a new pizza instance. So this is the pizza model. We're just creating a new instance of that and storing it in this variable. Now this is kind of like our code version of a pizza record. And what we need to do is apply the different properties, the name, the type and the base to this instance right here. So we can easily do that by saying pizza and then making a property first of all called name and set that equal to request and name. Remember, this is how we access the data. So that is setting the name property. I'm going to just duplicate this a couple of times. And instead of name, I'm going to change the second one to be type. And then the third one down here to be base. So now we've done that, we have this pizza record right here. Let's just log that pizza to the terminal. So I'm going to say error underscore log, and I'm going to output the pizza like so. So let us try this out. Open up the terminal first of all, so we can see, and then let's go to order a pizza. Your name, Sean, and we'll change this to Veg Supreme, at thin and crispy, order the pizza. Let's go over here, see what happens, and we can see this object logged right here. So we have the name, the type, and the base. So all that's left to do is to take that object and then save it to the database. And the way we do that is just by saying pizza, and then saying, save on that pizza. Now we have access to this method because remember, this is just an instance of the pizza model and the pizza model inherits all of those methods available to us to interact with the database. Save is one of them. So we're taking the instance of the pizza and we're saving it to the database. And because it's an instance of this model, it knows which table to go to to save it in. So let's see if this works. I'm gonna to go to order a pizza again. And this time I'll say Mario and Volcano and Gallic Crust order the pizza. Now let's check out our database. So at the minute we have these three right here. These ones we created manually. But if I refresh now, we should have a fourth. We do. ID4. And we can see Mario, Gallic Crust and Volcano. And also these things automatically as well created at and updated at, which is the same as created at to begin with until it's updated in the future. Awesome, so that all works. Now there's one more thing I'd like to do. When a user adds a new pizza and they click submit, it redirects them here. And at this point I'd be like, well, did it order or didn't it? So what I'd like to do is send some kind of message to this view so that we can output it to say something like, thank you for ordering. So let's do that. Let me now come over here and what we're doing is redirecting. So we can't just add a second parameter or second argument here with some data like we did when we used view up here. We added a second argument, which is an array of data. We can't do that in the redirect method. So instead, what we do is use a method called with, which we can chain onto the redirect. And inside here, we can define some data. So we have a key and a value. The key is going to be message. And the value is going to be thanks for your order. So this is going to be session data. And we can access that session data inside the view, inside the welcome screen, which we go to. So let me open up that view. If we go to welcome, I can output it somewhere around about here. So I'm going to do it above 
the link but below the title. So let's do a paragraph with a class of message just in case we style it in the future. And we're going to output this as a variable. So we need our double curly braces. The way we then get access to the session data is by using the session function like so. And then inside this function, we say what data we want. Well, we passed it through with a key of message right here. So we say we want that data and then it's going to grab this value for us. So let me say message like so. Now, obviously, when we first land on the page, if we're not coming from the form, then we're not going to have access to this data. But that's fine because then it just won't output it. But if we come from the form right here, if we're redirected and it comes with that data, then it will find that and it will output it. So let's save it and refresh over here so we don't see it to begin with. That's absolutely perfect because we don't want to land on the site and we don't want it thanking us straight away for ordering a pizza when we've not done. So if we say order a pizza now, I'm going to put my name in Luigi and the type is going to be Hawaiian and let's go with thick order the pizza. And voila, we have this message right here. Thanks for your order. We could probably style that a bit better, make it look like a little pop-up or something. But to be honest, that's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to show you Laravel, not CSS and fancy animation. But let's just check that that record has been saved into the database, which it has. It's right here. Now, there's one more thing I'd like to do with our pizza data, and that's add another property, extra toppings. Now, to do that, we're going to be using arrays and storing kind of like arrays of data, and we'll do that in the next video.